It's Saturday night. The kids are in bed. Which means we did it. We survived another week. So let's talk about it. From our latest homebrew project. To kids crafting projects. Just talking life with two young kids and two dogs. Grab your favorite beverage. Sit back. Relax. And see where the conversation takes us. Sometimes we don't even know until we get there. This is the Craft Parenting Podcast. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to this week's episode of the Craft Parenting Podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Another week has flown by, and it is once again time to record another episode. My name is Joe Ludwig, and with me is my lovely wife and co-host, Caroline. How's it going, Caroline? It's going pretty good. I am driving myself crazy getting things together for a yard sale that I invited myself to. Who are you driving crazy? (laughs) (laughs) I think you're going a little bit more crazy than I am and you're not even doing anything with it other than like saying yes get these things out of my house you're not gonna sell anything I will no you won't and then I'm gonna buy yarn with all of my money and Lily's gonna unravel it all over the house because that's her new favorite task I'm sure it's a milestone so we should be proud about it (laughs) (laughs) do we care about milestones past 20 months not really. Not until she can start cleaning the house with us in a productive manner, not just pushing around dirt. The spotlight is on Elliot now. Yeah. And now he finds his feet. It's so cute. He does. He finds his feet and he puts his little butt in the air and he rocks. Yeah. And then he rolls onto his stomach and he's like, oh, new perspective. <laughs> How's everybody going over here? What's going on? <laughs> also, facial expressions. Great for the very visual medium that is podcasting. But... He does giggle now. He does a lot of things that he didn't do last week. This is correct. He giggles. He smiles a lot. He's got a lot more head control. So we can probably start doing some more sit-uppy things with him. Eventually, we'll be able to bring out the jumper. Whenever Mom and Larry have to start packing things out of their house, we'll set up the jumper in the living room. And then we can alternate between Lily's baby dolls and possibly Elliot. (laughs) Because Lily's baby dolls go wherever Elliot goes. Well, that's a milestone for Lily. She's been carrying around her baby doll a lot, a lot more than usual. We actually had to take Bitty Baby with us to a restaurant this week. Took her to the park, too. Oh, yeah, we did take Bitty Baby to the park as well. She didn't go outside the van. She almost got left behind. (laughs) Because Lily threw her out of the van. Ah, poor Bitty Baby. So, yeah, it was a nice short week because you were off on Monday and Tuesday. I was off on Monday, and I just don't work on Tuesdays. So we got a nice little four day weekend. That was fun. Of course, we don't want to belittle the sacrifice of those who have fought and died for this country. So we have the right to do the things that we do on days like Memorial Day, which is this past Monday. So if you aren't from the U.S., or maybe if you are, Memorial Day is observed on the final Monday of May in the U.S. It is a day to honor fallen soldiers. And this is different than Veterans Day, which is in November. And And that is to honor those who have served or are currently serving in the armed forces. It's a little bit different than Memorial Day. But sometimes people get confused the two or merge the two. Yeah, if you try to thank a service member for their service Memorial Day weekend, they'll be like, no, no, no. This weekend is not about me. It is about my brothers that I'm no longer with. Right. We have another great show planned out for you this week. We are going to relive our wedding day since our anniversary was June 20th. But before we get into that, let's talk about what we did this week. As we said before, we had a long weekend, which meant that Sunday we could hang out with friends. We saw people that we haven't seen in forever. It was awesome. It was really nice. We went over my one of my oldest friends. Yep, you've known him since elementary school. Probably second or first grade. And we still hang out. But we didn't go to his house. He lives downtown. I'm in a little townhouse. I think you were talking about that the other week. Yeah, we would go to his house if we wanted to see the WEBN fireworks from from afar. Because he has a really good view of them from his porch. 
Oh, does he? Yes, because he watches the Reds fireworks every Friday. Oh, nice. So yeah, we went to his house that's closer to our parents' house. It's like halfway between our parents' house and our house for the time being until my mom moves. And his parents' house, it's like my dream. Well, the the backyard is like my dream yard. It's nice and flat and huge. It's pretty big, yeah, and it's flat and it has a pool in it. A huge in-ground pool. Yeah, an in-ground pool and then a really nice patio. Yes. And a really nice, also, a grill and like a bar. Oh yeah, he's got a nice stone bar. It has a built-in mini fridge and a space for the grill to hang out. But I remember swimming in that pool, you know, in the third grade with the whole with all of our friends. Yeah, well, from what his mom was saying one of the times we were over there, that pool's been in for forever. Like, they put that pool in soon after they built the house. Yeah, and it's a perfect yard for it. Yeah. But, unfortunately, Mother Nature decided that... It was going to be 60 degrees outside. It was a pool party and no one was getting in the pool. Lily wanted to get in the pool. Yeah, that was the hardest part of the entire night. Just keeping Lily away from her one true love. Yeah, keeping her away from the pool and just get, keeping her out of trouble in general. Yeah, she does like to get into trouble. But I mean, it's not really a toddler proof area. No, because they don't have any small children themselves. So, Which we knew, but well, I mean, we I think we assumed that it would be hot enough to swim yeah. on Memorial Day. We, we assumed it wouldn't be a terrible idea to bring the children. It was a mildly terrible idea to bring the children. If we were swimming, she would have been occupied. Oh, yeah. She, and she would have had a blast in that pool. But, you know, we, we got there and it was too cold and we didn't have a babysitter because we didn't know what the weather was going to do. Yeah. So we'll just have to go back to their house again. We'll invite ourselves over. I'm really good at doing that. You are really good at doing that. I don't think they mind. They keep talking to us. They keep inviting us over. So. <laughs> and that's just not me saying, hey, I'm going to come over to your house this weekend. But when I was super pregnant, I spent like every weekend in their pool. You spent a lot of weekends in their pool. I think we we were at their house Friday night, Saturday night, and I weaseled my way into a family function on Sunday. It was a low-key family function. It was a low-key family function, but I weaseled our way into it. <laughs> This was before kids. This was before kids. That was also the place where we brought a brand new puppy, Clara. We, I think we had just dropped Clara's sister off at her forever home. Or it was like the weekend after we had done that. And I, th- I want to say it was the same weekend. Because we remember. had Zoe and like an eight or nine week old Clara. And I am very blind without my glasses. And I had taken my glasses off because I was legitimately swimming in the pool. Well, first, to paint the picture, they have the pool and then they have... Gorgeous landscaping around the pool. Yes. And they have Just leave it at gorgeous landscaping around the pool. Dramatic. So I'm hanging out in the pool and I'm like, oh, Clara, you're so cute. She's laying in the landscaping by the pool, looking adorable through my very fuzzy eyes. And then I notice that her head's moving a little funny. Oh, boy. And then her head stops moving funny and she's like, she's standing up and she starts coming towards me and the side of her head just slowly turns red (laughs) like a horror movie. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what's going on? Because I am like legitimately blind. (laughs) Well, Clara learned that every rose has its thorn, which is Clara's theme song. And she still has a scar on her ear from where it got stuck on the thorn on the rose bush. And poor Clara got traumatized because I had to throw her in a sink to wash all the blood off because head wounds bleed like crazy. It wasn't even that big, the wound itself. It was not. But because she has really floppy ears. It just made it worse. I think she might have shaken her head as well, which increased the surface area of the blood. Yeah. And then like you said, we had to rush her inside. And right inside that the back door, that's their laundry room. And it's like the smallest little sink ever. Yeah. But Clara <laughs> fit in it perfectly. <laughs> Yeah, it was just her size. I was hoping like laundry room, utility tub. No. no. Itty bitty <laughs> sink. And this was like at that point, I had not been to his parents' house a whole lot. 
I was still pretty new to going to their house for the summers because he had finally like been back in town consistently or something where he had started throwing bashes at his parents' house that we started going to. Yeah. I mean, you've been there before that. We we showed up randomly one night. I remember opening up a, a beer that I smuggled in from Europe. Mm-hmm. My hungry trip. Yeah. So, but yeah, it was a good time. So we hung out there. He made super yummy food because they grilled kebabs. He is an excellent cook. And we had a variety of salads, only one of which was semi-healthy because it's the Midwest. Salad can mean lots of different things. There was potato salad, a pasta salad, and a salad salad. And they were all delicious. And then I made mac and cheese to share. And it was actually your angry mac and cheese? It wasn't very angry, though. I needed to spice it up a bit more, but it was still really tasty. It was a held back mac and cheese. It was slightly frustrated. Stephen and Hillary probably would have liked it. If I talked about my mac and cheese on this podcast, I think that I have. <laughs> well, people did not like it. I liked it and Tony liked it. And Tony said, don't change it. <laughs> Everyone else was annoyed. Not we did my talk fault. about this because <laughs> it was Tony the Optimist. Yeah, Stephen and Hillary were not appreciative of my angry mac and cheese. Apparently it was a little too angry one year at the Super Bowl party. (laughs) And Tony and myself were the only ones that would eat it. I don't know that Tony ate it. I ate it. Tony ate it. (laughs) (laughs) So then Monday was Memorial Day and my parents had a little get together. Yeah, we had some fried chicken. It was yummy. From a local chicken place. Ron's Roost. So good. We got to see Grandma. We got to see two of your aunts. And oh, they yeah. both got to meet Elliot. Neither of them had gotten to meet Elliot yet. And they haven't really seen Lily a whole lot either. Yes, yeah, so they got to see Lily too in all of her I am at Oma's house glory and josh's area in the backyard got, it got repurposed. repurposed it got repurposed <laughs> yes so a few years ago as a present to his parents josh built a little bonfire area he made a bench and a nice little bonfire pit it got used a handful of times before he moved out and then it got used even fewer times after he moved out just got overgrown it got overgrown really the kids were the only ones having bonfires at that house anyway way and jenna was not really one for bonfires so they took out all the bonfire stuff laid down some mulch and now lily has a play corner she has a sandbox and her trampoline and a water table and her slide supposedly there's going to be a teeter-totter uh, apparently your father's gonna make a teeter-totter that is a thing that he has told me <laughs> did he tell you about it he did not tell me about it but you I have traced. I, you, I, I don't understand why you traced the rocking horse. I don't understand why he had me trace the seat of the rocking horse either, but I did the thing and gave him the cutout. Well, maybe, Lily, maybe you'll get a teeter totter by the time you're six <laughs> or seven. Maybe, maybe by then. So earlier in the day, we hung out at my mom's house for a little bit to help clean up some of the things from my bedroom. I went through a whole dresser and got rid of a lot of things. And in the process, I had found confetti eggs left over from a festival that I attended with my uncle and cousins in California back in like 2000. 3 2004 it was the summer between 7th and 8th grade so that was that was probably like 2004 ish so all i know is that I, you cracked something over my head and a bunch of confetti fell out yep so i had 3 eggs left over one that looked like a clown and then two that were just painted and all of which were filled with confetti apparently i was saving this these for lily i don't really know why i was saving them they just kind of hung out in a drawer in my dresser for for over 15 years. So we decide to pull them out at your parents' house. And Lily cracks one open and, con- open and confetti falls on the floor. And she's like, uh-oh. Because <laughs> she broke it. So then we poured the confetti on her head. And she's like, what's going on? <laughs> And then we poured it on Jenna's head and she giggled. So then we got out the video camera, well, our cell phones, and I handed her another egg, which she then also cracked open and said, "Uh uh-oh. 
and was like, now I don't know what to do with this. So we poured some more on Jenna's head and then we poured some on mommy's head and daddy didn't let us pour any on his head because he was the one recording. So then we poured more on Lily's head and then we got all cleaned up to take pictures. And then grandma tried to leave before we could take any pictures. So we had to go to grandma. But when you're like 95 or 96, I think she's 96 now. And you're like, I'm going home. Like, you just go home. You don't care about anybody else. So we made her stay an extra 30 seconds to take pictures. She kept asking, Sue, can we leave? Can we leave? Can we leave? Yeah. I guess my mom didn't hear that. I Uh didn't hear that, but I also wasn't, like, listening for that, so... Well, she was talking to Sue and she was like, I'm ready to go. Then we get back and we start cleaning up the backyard after pictures. And I have one egg left. So I crack it over Joe's head and I miss your beer. So you're welcome for that. Just barely. (laughs) And it was only because of my quick thinking that you missed the beer. But then your mom texted me, help. Oh, yeah. Mom was like, hey, can you help? Larry take a couch to the garage and I'm like okay well the kids are about to get baths it's way earlier in the night than we thought it was well we conned my mom and sister into giving them a bath we did I told Jenna that it could be a fun bath and Jenna's a big fan of those because that means they can play and they can sing and whatever it is that Lily likes to do in the bath but I guess Elliot doesn't take a bath with Lily at my parents house no they take two separate baths I was like well the kids aren't going to be ready to go for a while because they're going to get baths so you go to my mom's house you help Larry move this couch it'll take like 10 minutes by the time you get back we'll all be ready to go or we'll be closer to being ready to go yeah we thought it would take 10 minutes three hours later (laughs) no it did not take three hours But the problem with your mom's house, and I don't think they understand this, the problem with her house is that when you walk in the front door, there's a little hallway. But it mostly leads right to the closet. And there's a closet right in front of it. And then to the left of the closet, there's a staircase with a hand railing. And it's very similar to my mom's house, but it's a little different. For example, the hand railing is there where at my mom's house, my mom and dad's house, they just have a wall. And I think the hallway in my parents' house is a little slightly wider. But they also, your mom also has a closet. And that's very problematic when you're trying to get something to fit through a a doorway. Just a little bit. Especially large items of furniture, like overstuffed couches. Yeah, so we couldn't get the couch out. Your mom kept asking, well, how did they get it in? How did they get it in? Well, it's a lot easier to get something in. Than it is to get it out. Because there's a lot more room to maneuver the couch outside. So you could, and they didn't have the covered porch then. So there wasn't a pillar there. Oh, yeah. That pillar is new. To get the couch in, I'm sure they could have maneuvered and done all kinds of things to get it in. But to get it out, not so much. And on top of all that, they have a light fixture that's probably, it hangs probably lower than that ceiling fan. I always forget about that light fixture because I never look at it. (laughs) Yeah, what would you say that is? like? It's probably like a foot, hanging like a foot or so from the ceiling. So that was also getting in the way. So we tried to maneuver this couch. I'm sure it was, if someone was looking on the outside, I'm sure it was pretty comical. We tried to do it on the side. We tried to stand it up and then we would run into the light fixture. I'm like, can't we take the light fixture down? And they're like, no, 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 we're not going to do that. I think the light fixture is down because it's broken. I don't know. Oh, did they take it down? I do not know. There was a light fixture on the kitchen table when we visited on Thursday. But we kept hitting it. With the couch, and we just couldn't get it through the door. Yeah. I I texted mom at 6.58 p.m. Joe is on his way. At 7.26 p.m., I haven't heard anything from you guys. So I asked mom, how's it going? Her response, cutting the couch in two. Okay. And then photo of Larry with reciprocating saw, cutting couch in two. (laughs) <laughs> we should post that on the facebook page we should slash instagram to which i say oh boy and then about 10 minutes later there's a photo of you and larry standing outside of the house with the couch in two pieces it was a nice couch but the reason why they're getting rid of it is because apparently it was ripped it was ripped yeah it wasn't in great condition i had no idea your mom got that couch right after we started dating Uh, yeah it was soon after 
It wasn't long after we started dating that she got that couch. So we're talking 2010. But I think like if you don't like oil it or let it wear right, it cracks and doesn't hold up well. They bought this fancy duct tape. Oh, yeah. (laughs) To match the, well, they did other stuff to it first your mom looked online and discovered that you could buy colored duct tape to match your couch and it worked i mean i didn't notice that they had duct tape on it until she pointed it out but i also don't go to your mom's house that often yeah and sit on the couch usually i'm chasing a toddler (laughs) she likes to run in their house she likes to run at your mom's house too i'm sensing a pattern well if we didn't have the baby gates down up, I'm sure she would go in a circle. Oh, she'd run like crazy through our house. So the reason why they were getting rid of it was because of that. And they tried giving it away. And thank God no one <laughs> no one wanted it because <laughs> I don't know how we would have gotten it out of that, that doorway. You put the onus on the people taking the couch. <laughs> Well, the thing is, we were damaging the doorway. Oh, yeah. So that's when I was like, yeah, we should, we should. This is a lost cause. So that was Monday. Short week, but we're still going. So on Tuesday, mom was going to come over and help us do some laundry. And the kids slept in. Apparently, we weared them out on Monday because at 930 in the morning, Lily was still sleeping and Elliot had only been up for like 10 minutes. So we woke the kids up so we could go get coffee and we went to white oak coffee house as a family it was nice lily ate most of a slice of zucchini bread all on her own ate it with the fork and all she was really cute she was elliot slept and let me have my coffee so then after we got home you bought flowers oh yeah i did buy flowers what what is her name daisy jane it's daisy jane's flower truck yep local to Cincinnati. Shout out to Daisy Jane. Mm -hmm. So then we got home. We got home and I had already started to do some laundry. So I swapped the loads of laundry around and then mom came over. We did a few things around the house maybe and I decided today's the day. We're gonna do it. We're gonna start to paint Elliot's room. So I started to edge in on Elliot's room, taking it from yellow to blue. And I was internally screaming because well now we have to finish it. This is true, but we're going to get it done. He's three and a half months old. We have to finish his room at some point. Otherwise, we're going to finish his room like two months before we move out. And we can't have that. It was just really random. But yeah, so it's painted. Well, you you edged in. I edged in half the room. And then on Wednesday during your lunch break, you painted half the room. And then Thursday after you got off work, you painted the second half of his room. You have to edge in and then we have to do a second coat. But the furniture is all moved around now too. So yeah. I, I flipped some stuff around so it'll be easier to move furniture when we paint. Because the furniture is still in there and we didn't like take it out or whatever. Well, we don't really have any place to put it. Well, we could have put, you know, the we could have rolled up the carpet and because now there's paint on the carpet. That was not me. I do not. You should know this by now. After we painted every single room in this house, <laughs> I do not have a good track record when it comes to paint. No. So just let me do it. But then it won't get done because I'm too busy running after the kids when I get home from work. Yeah, because they want you. They just want their mommy snuggles. We went out to Chandler's for dinner. That was like our first family of four dinner without anybody else we go to breakfast a lot yeah we do breakfast we do like coffee shops but we haven't really done dinner breakfast is usually early like the nine o'clock hour yeah when it's not super busy i mean it's relatively busy but usually gets super busy around 10 or 11 so we tried to avoid that but this is we went to dinner during peak hours we did so that was the first for us lily did pretty good we had to bring bitty baby into the restaurant with us bitty baby and the bottle right yeah and bitty baby's bottle so that was fun and what was she doing she was really funny Oh, she kept watching the horses because there was horse racing on the TV above our table. So she kept saying horsey or going nay when and then she was dancing to the music, too, because I started dancing to the music and then she started dancing to the music. It was really cute. She yeah, there was music playing in the restaurant and she she was mimicking you. It was really cute. We have a snap of that somewhere. So then on Wednesday, everybody went back to work. 
I went back to work and you went back to work. Things had calmed down at my work by that point. So I got to have a slightly chiller day. It wasn't super chill, but it was slightly chill. And then you made chili for dinner, which was yummy. I decided that at at like 4.30, I decided that we're going to have chili for dinner. Okay, Joe, that sounds great. But we don't have any bell peppers. And oh, oh crap, Caroline's birthday is tomorrow. I should probably get a card. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and brownies. You got brown and more ice cream. We do like ice cream in this house. We're running out of room in the freezers because of all the ice cream. Well, you made me get the ridiculous pails. Midwestern themed party. So when I came home, I was <laughs> greeted. <laughs> Subject change. <laughs> buy some cards and my new Fiona shirt and you have a Fiona shirt now so everyone has Fiona shirts technically you already had a Fiona shirt but it was a sweatshirt so it didn't really count the Bengals one yes that I steal all the time I think you've maybe worn it twice but I've worn it like 30 times wow I refuse to wear Bengal stuff I only wear it because it's Fiona so on Thursday I turned 30 As discussed in a previous podcast. I'm old. Yes. That was the name of the podcast, too. It was. It is. So I was trying to figure out what we were going to do for the day. The weather wasn't promising, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to be crazy. I'm going to take both kids to the zoo by myself. Narrator. She did not take the kids to the zoo. No. So I checked. So the weather was saying it wasn't going to start raining until like noon or 1 p.m., which would have given us about an hour at the zoo by the time we would have gotten everybody in the car and to the zoo. And then it said it was going to rain at 11. And I was like, well. And they were actually right. And they were actually right. Well, I would like to go to the zoo and see Fiona. It doesn't make sense to load everybody in the van to go to the zoo to then have to turn around and leave the zoo right away. So instead, we went to the park. And after we went to the park, I went to my mom's house because mom met us at the park. And I cleaned out the closet in my old room. So now all I have are like two boxes in the basement to go through. And I will have officially gone through all of my things that I needed to go through at mom's house. It's not all of my things at mom's house because there are things that we have determined that we're keeping. Like all of my American Girl stall stuff. We haven't gone through any of that. We just know where it is and it's staying. It's for Lily. And then we decided, and by we I mean me, that I'm going to hang out with Stephen and Hillary Saturday morning, which is... The morning of your party. The morning of my party and tomorrow morning and sell some stuff at the yard sale. This always happens when we have people over. You're like, I'm going to go to Target. Bye. I'm going to go to Stephen and Hillary's. Bye. Have fun cleaning the house, cutting the grass. I forgot about the grass. I always forget about the grass. This is why I am not in charge of the lawn. I am in charge of the flower beds, but not the lawn. (laughs) Because I just forget that it exists. After I helped clean out mom's house a bit, I cleaned out the basement a bit. So I reorganized the basement so things are a little bit cleaner. We have a little bit of more room in the storage room because I had moved things around to where they're actually supposed to live and got rid of a few things too. And then Friday, we both went to work. Woohoo, work. During my lunch break, I went over Stephen and Hillary's house. Because even after we showed them pictures of you moving things, quote unquote, on Monday, they were still down for you helping them move furniture. I was like, fair warning, this is what happened the last time Joe moved furniture. We don't care. Come help. It wasn't a couch, so... Yeah, that was good. I was grateful for that. But their house is more open. It's like our house. Like you walk in and it's a a family room. But you didn't have to get anything from their bedroom, did you? No, I did. Oh, well, that's hard, though, because it's like a hallway to a stairwell. Nothing, nothing crazy. So they had a, I guess it was like a headrest, a headboard, but it was like it had like a the headboard has storage cubes. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. So a like, a, storage like a cabinet yeah. with doors and stuff where you can put drinks and stuff. So it's bulky, it's kind of heavy. And there was also a, a, a wire. So I guess it had electricity in it. Probably had a light. Yeah. But yeah, we got it down. Mm-hmm. It wasn't it wasn't too complicated. 
It was just, it took like 30 minutes and I was happy to do it. Friday was also National Donut Day. Oh yeah, they got us donuts. I should remember because I stopped at their house before I went to work. They, you mean Steven? Yeah. Hillary, I think Hillary was still sleeping when I showed up to their house. I don't know. She had to go into the office. I think she actually got up early and went into the office. I don't think she had done that yet because I'm pretty sure her car was still outside. I don't know then, but Steven got up super early and went to a local donut shop. Busy Bee, they're really yummy. And he got there at five o'clock before it was even open. And the guy was like, wow, he was surprised to see him. And he didn't have all the, he was still baking donuts, (laughs) trying to get him out into the display or whatever. So Steven was picking the fresh, the freshest of the fresh donuts. I want to say I had second dibs at the donut box. The donut box? Yes, the box of donuts that he brought. But they were re- I got a Danish. It was really yummy. And then at work, my boss was like, no donuts for National Donut Day? Like, disgraceful. And I'm like, I already got a donut. Thanks to my friends. Sorry, not sorry. Sucks to be you. And then Joe picked up groceries from a party tomorrow because I forgot to order a cake and was trying to figure out where the hell I was going to buy a cake from. Fortunately, Kroger had extra cakes. I picked up the kids from very tired grandparents. Both grandparents parents were pretty much asleep when I picked up the kids. <laughs> Lily was definitely running the show. <laughs> was someone watching her? Your mom was. She was locked into the living room and kitchen. <laughs> But your mom was laying on the floor with Elliot and Lily walked up to me holding her little thing of Cheerios. I had forgotten to eat my fig bar this morning because I ate my Danish and I just left the fig bar in my car and I was hungry. So I grabbed my fig bar. I took a bite and Lily was like, I get food. So I gave her a bite. So it was, I got a bite. Lily got a bite. Did she like it? She did. She wanted more. And then so then she started to eat her Cheerios and she walked over to your dad who was trying to wake up on the couch and they ate Cheerios together on the couch while I packed all of their things up. It's good that they like the same snacks. (laughs) (laughs) I believe that was her breakfast unless they refilled up. They probably did. I don't know. Hopefully they did. You don't really know what goes on over there when the parents are away. She played on the splash pad because your mom got a little pad that hooks up to the hose and it's like a sprinkler pad. And I don't know how long Lily played with that, but she had a blast. (laughs) She did look like she was having fun. And they actually put her in her swimsuit this time. I was very proud of them for that. Both kids came home in the same outfit that I put them in. That's practically a miracle. Got home, ordered yummy workhouse pizza for dinner. I got a Caesar salad the size of my head, apparently. I still have Caesar salad in the fridge for tomorrow. And we got some deep dish pizza. So yummy. Chicago style. Yes, Chicago style pizza. So it is weird because it's cheese and then toppings and then sauce. Like from, it's it's bottom layer crust, then cheese, then toppings, then sauce. I But it's yummy, so I'll let it live. Then crust and then sauce. I don't remember. Well, it's stuffed, so you put oh, yeah. there's crust on the top and the bottom. So much carbs. So yummy. But you got a small pizza, so we didn't we didn't overeat. Correct. I did not order a big pizza. I was smart. And I organized stuff for the yard sale. Everything's five dollars. I don't know. Pricing things is hard. Just take it so it's no longer in my house. But I can use the money to buy chocolate and yarn. And then tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow's Saturday. We're recording early because going to do this yard sale thing with Steven and Hillary. And then it's my birthday party. Woohoo! You're having a Midwestern themed party. What exactly that means, I don't know. It's just going to be a fun party. It means we're going to have pop, not soda. If you call it soda, you are immediately kicked out of the party and can only come back in if you bring a suitable, I'm sorry, casserole. We're going to have all the food, skyling dip, broccoli salad, which is not very healthy salad, funeral potatoes. I'm picking up some city chicken tomorrow on my way home from Stephen and Hillary's, which contrary to what Joe thought is not, does not contain any chicken. It's pork. Okay. I, I haven't had it in a while and my mom always made it. It's basically, it's pork on a spit. It's Yeah. It's little skewers. Little skewer. Yeah. Yeah. So when I called up the butcher shop, I was like, okay, 
I want to get 40 sticks because that's two sticks per person. We'll like cook half of them and then determine whether or not we want to cook the other half based on people here. And then the butcher shop called me today and they're like, hey, I want to clarify your order, whether it's 40 pieces of meat or 40 sticks of meat, because there's like four to six pieces of meat per stick or whatever. And I was like, I want 40 sticks. And he said, okay. So they were putting that together today. So excited. That was our week. So now it's time to hear what's bugging Caroline in children's TV. So we have started to watch a new episode of Sesame Street. And this episode is all about ballet. And Big Bird is convinced that after one practice, he is going to be able to dance Swan Lake. Now, part of his logic is sound because he has a distant cousin who's a swan and a lot of the ballet stuff is based off of birds and he is in fact a bird. So there is some semblance of logic behind that. But not until the very end of the episode do they explain to Big Bird fully how these things work. So he goes through a practice. He steps on his foot a bunch, just trying to learn third position because there's first, second, third, fourth, and fifth position. So you think, okay, Big Bird, maybe let's take the few steps back and think more about this. Then they get into stretching on the at the bar, and he has lots of issues with that because he's not very limber. And then they try to practice some jumping, and he crashes and injures his beak after he's already injured his foot. And then he's like, well, okay, I can do Swan Lake now, right? And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Actually, you're going to need like a hundred more practices and like all of this other stuff that's going to have to go into actually being able to perform Swan Lake. And it's like, could we have explained this at the beginning of the episode? And like Big Bird could have just like completely ignored it, like totally would have been fine with that. But no, we're going to wait till the very end of the episode and basically crush his spirit because he's worked up this whole hour getting this mental image of how life's gonna be but i mean it ends all cute with just dance to your own beat basically so that's nice lily really likes this episode she does she likes to try to dance with them. Each month, we only play one episode of Sesame Street. We used to do a different episode every night. And then at Christmas time, we started rotating between the two. I think eventually we found a third Christmas episode. But really, there's only like two good Christmas episodes of Sesame Street. So we'd rotate back and forth. One from like the 70s. And the original. The, yeah, the original Christmas movie. And then another one from like the 2010s. So no style stylistic differences with those whatsoever we noticed towards the end of that month that lily started not necessarily like interacting with the tv but like she would kind of like know what was going to come next and was more interested in what was going on so then we started doing two episodes a month and we would just alternate back and forth between those two episodes but then we would keep forgetting either what episode we were on or what the second episode was we were supposed to be watching so we decided we're just going to watch one episode a month and we'll just pick a new episode every month she typically watches sesame street around the five o'clock hour when i'm making dinner yeah you know it's an hour long we just we watched them on youtube <laughs> yeah so our selection is limited as far as what we can watch and sometimes the quality leaves something to be desired but lily doesn't care yeah so last month it was grunchetta's grouch beauty salon yes and there was a segment where the kids doing karate Yes, that featured Rory. And Rory is in this episode, too, because we count to 20 and Rory and his friends do 20 jumping jacks. Oh, nice. Yep. Now, Rory doesn't say anything, but same group of kids. He's the last one that does a jumping jack. So interesting. Interesting facts about Sesame Street. So there was a segment about karate and Lily would. Lily was really interested in that. <laughs> She'd get up halfway through and try to do it too. And there is a segment, a shorter segment. That was like a seven minute segment. But there's like a, maybe like a two minute segment with Korean. Was it Korean? Yeah, it was little girls doing a dance about spring. And that was towards the end of the episode. And she would get up and she'd actually do like a quarter to half of that dance because it was all really simple stuff. It was really short too. Yeah. 
So she was really interested in that. And we tried one night to just look, go on YouTube and look up ballerinas, like a tutorial on ballerina. She wasn't super ballet. interested in that for long. No, she wasn't. Like, I, we tried to look up videos on, I guess it was Swan Lake. Was that Swan Lake? I think that's what you searched for. Nutcracker. I don't know. I don't really know about ballet, but she wasn't really interested in that, but she was interested in the kids dancing. So I found this episode of Sesame Street where it's all about dance. I'll be interested to see what she does by the end of the month if we watch it every day. Yeah, I'll be curious too. Because it's interesting. She's starting to get interested in tumbling. Yeah, she she really wants to tumble. I really need to get her into a tumbling class. I think she's too young though but and then with COVID and stuff but so you're just annoyed that Big Bird that no one explained to Big Bird what the process was going to entail until the very end like tell him at the beginning I'm fine with that because if he's like completely ignoring it because they're like well Big Bird okay that's what you think not like hey Big Bird in actuality it's gonna take a really long time I have noticed that you are drinking an adult beverage, my dear. What you drinking? So I went to Westside today and I picked up a few things in the adult beverage variety. And I am drinking tonight a Hefeweizen, which is a German wheat. Tis the season. Yes. And it is 4.9 ABV, 19 IBU. And the description is, this is a traditional German style Hefeweizen loaded with clove, spices, and and just the right amount of banana. Those are the flavor notes. I don't think they actually add those things necessarily. Our special German yeast is left unfiltered, so expect a softly golden, cloudy appearance. So you can brew a Hefeweizen with a yeast specific for Hefeweizen, and you can get, depending on how you store it, if you do the homebrew, you can get two different flavor profiles. I forget which is which, but if you store it warm, it's one, and if you store it really cold it's another and it's either banana flavored or clove flavored i don't remember which one we always go for the not banana when we do ours because you don't like banana well whatever we brew is it's yummy and this is also yummy perfect for a hot summer day which it's supposed to get hot again after we've been drowned out yeah from all of the rain the cicadas are not drowned it though no, they managed to survive somehow. Yeah, it's a yummy beer. So what are you drinking? I am drinking an Angry Orchard Crisp Apple Hard Apple Cider. Not seltzer water. Because you are trying to get me to not drink all of the seltzer water. So it's five and a half ABV. It has no IBUs because it's apple cider. The description is Angry Orchard Crisp Apple has a bright crisp apple flavor, just like biting into a fresh apple. It is a perfect balance of sweetness and bright acidity from culinary apples and dryness of traditional cider making apples, resulting in a complex yet refreshing hard cider. It's tasty cider. I like it. It's one of my go-tos. Would drink again. Very yummy. Cheers to the weekend and Lord help us in the week ahead because starting tomorrow we are going to have to do it all over again. More crazy adventures are ahead and we will make sure to share them with you each week right here on the Craft Parenting Podcast. So now on to the main topic. Love. True love is what brings us together today. <laughs> so we are going to talk about our wedding day and what a tale of that that is. <laughs> Lots of stuff happened that made it stressful, I guess. Yeah. It was smooth sailing up until we got married. And then afterwards, it kind of got all stressful. For those of you who have not yet gotten married, the hardest part about planning your wedding day is figuring out when everyone is available. So you pick out who's going to marry you, where you're going to get married, and where you are going to have the party after you get married. Some might call that the reception. Yeah. Yeah. The reception, whatever you want to call it. You pick out these three things and then you pick out like five dates that you potentially want to get married. And you tell these three things. OK, these are the five potential dates that I want to get married. And you're only going to be able to have one of those days to choose from once you give dates to those three places because 
there's only going to be one day that works for all three. So we originally had a date in May or a date in June because it worked for the reception hall and the church. And then when we talked to the priest, we got the date in June. So I guess we should back up and say we got married June 20th, 2015. That year was the year of the wedding. It was. Which made it difficult to plan. It did make it difficult to plan. There were at least four weddings in May and June that we personally had to attend, but we did not attend all of them. We had friends that got married in early May who had a wedding that was very similar to ours as far as... Actually, no, it was the same priest, church, and reception hall. Sorry, they were Newport Syndicate, so they didn't go to the Donish Robin. But they also had the same the same priest, which was Father Pete, who at the time was the priest for St. Ignatius, which is a, the church attached to a giant Catholic school. So he deals with children all the time. Because he deals with children all the time, one of his big things is making sure that you get responses back during Mass. So at one point, early on in the Mass, he's stopped the mass to get everyone to repeat whatever it was we had just said again because we were not loud enough and we needed to help participate in this joyous day. This did not happen at our wedding. No, it did not. (laughs) I think he was very warm at our wedding. He was very warm at our (laughs) wedding and I was very loud because I can project my voice. Thank you, Girl Scouts. Their wedding was in early May. Allison's was late May, so I was the maid of honor in Allison's wedding, and Allison was my matron of honor, and I told her that even if her and Mark didn't tie the knot on the programs, she was going to be matron of honor, Mrs. Allison Messer, and they better show up and put on happy faces to (laughs) not ruin my wedding. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, because they got married a few weeks before us. Yeah, they got married, went on their honeymoon, and then she came back in time for my for my wedding. Yeah, that was fun. So we had the rehearsal dinner the night before. It was supposed to rain, so I had purchased a bunch of golf umbrellas. So if we had to take pictures outside and it was raining, we would be okay. We had a party bus so everybody could fit on it and they could bring their plus ones on the bus if they wanted to. All the ladies got ready at my house. All the guys got ready at our house. You guys played Super Smash Brothers on the Wii. Yeah. With the photographer. Yes. <laughs> Because our photographers were a couple. It was a husband and wife. And the husband hung out with you guys. And the wife hung out with me and the ladies. And then we didn't really go the traditional route where I saw you first coming down the aisle. And just because of logistics. Well, it's because of logistics, like trying to get from point A to point B. And I'm not a huge fan of have a wedding ceremony at like 2 p.m. where your first look is on the aisle. So good luck getting decent pictures of that. But also we took photos for like an hour and a half. And that didn't even include family photos. So it would be, okay, after your wedding ceremony, here is a half hour of family photos, followed by an hour and a half of photos of the bridal party. Guests go have fun while there's nothing really you can do. (laughs) Just kind of kills your whole day as a wedding attendee. So we did first looks at a cemetery. Yeah, and that's kind of a Cincinnati thing, right? Yes, because when you're in Cincinnati and you want to get pretty pictures in a park, but not have a bunch of other people there, you go to the cemetery. Because Spring Grove Cemetery is gorgeous and has tons of places where you can take photos. And like no one else is there because it's the older parts of the cemetery that nobody ever visits. They have ponds and mausoleums that look really pretty. Bridges. Lots of pretty bridges too, yeah. And they keep up the lawn and they have flowers and everything. And they don't charge you to take pictures there. So it works. So that's where we did our first look. We said, aww. So I think it was my dad drove all the guys. Yeah, in your family van. You guys made it. We got dropped off in the party bus. Yeah, I don't know how we... I don't know either. We did it. (laughs) (laughs) But we, we got lucky because it did rain. It did rain that morning. That morning. And just backing up a little bit. I remember Matt, my best man, spent the night and we drove to the hotel tell where you and I were going to stay to drop off our car. Yeah. We could keep a car at the hotel for a week and a half when we were on the honeymoon. We didn't have to pay for parking, which was was really nice. It was. We felt strongly that we wanted to drive ourselves home, which was good because stuff. It was an interesting trip back. 
come. That's a whole other story, though. We're only talking about the wedding today. Yes. <laughs> we met at the cemetery, and we didn't really have a plan as far as where. We No, yeah, we just kind of told you to find us. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the photographers coordinated that part, and he was on the phone with they figured her, it out. and he we- was talking to the... Bu- to my dad we all got there the pictures are gorgeous they're still up in our living room so then the party bus drove us to the church yep after we took pictures everybody hopped in the party bus to go to the church i decided that i did not need my phone so i left my phone on the party bus forgetting that my phone was the only place we had the contact for the bus driver yeah somehow matt got the phone number for our driver i think he called the rental bus company and they gave it to him so the church was beautiful but did not have AC and it was the middle of June. We knew it didn't have AC. It's a very old church. But it's a very pretty church. Very pretty church. Very old church. Does not have AC. We knew that going in. But we also knew that Father Pete could do a 45 minute wedding mass. And boy did he do that. (laughs) He did. (laughs) I don't even think he stayed for pictures, did he? He did not stay for pictures. He was like, okay, let's get you guys hitched stand by. He signed the stuff and he's like, see ya. We're like, do you want to do shots in the church basement? No, no, no. Bye bye. (laughs) I go now. We took family photos in the church while Matt was then trying to figure out how to get a hold of the bus driver to get the things that we needed to take photos in the church basement and figure out how to get to our next location. And we heard whispers of an issue with the bus. The story that I got at this point was there's something in the bus that says if it's been on for this long, you can't turn it off. Or if it's been, if you turn it off, it has to turn off for so long. It was a weird story. It made no sense. It did not make any sense. But we were young and in love and we didn't care. We're like, whatever. I would say it makes more sense if you were a trucker. Yeah. So if we back it up quite a ways, we were supposed to get picked up in a white party bus and we got picked up in a black party bus because he said the party bus that he was supposed to take us in didn't have AC. So he took the backup party bus. I'm like, whatever. I don't care what color my party bus is. To the party. Our German church has a German bar and we got permission to go down and have a picture of the bridal party taking a shot at this bar. It was gorgeous. I love it. It was Angry Orchard. So it was and like shot shot yeah it was just we needed something for we needed something to look pretty in the glasses yeah and not get everybody schnockered yeah and we got some beautiful pictures yep then we went to music hall to meet the parents for some photos not inside the church with the bridal party and parents and the bus was acting a little weird on the way to music hall but we made it and then we're like let's go to the museum center to just take pictures of joe and myself in front of the museum center because it's on the way to the highway it's an extra like five minutes yes let's make the stop and the bus was not happy about going to the museum center but it did it i think it might have stopped once And then we got it going again and we're just like, let's just not listen to music. Maybe that will solve the problem. Yeah, because this bus, when we say stopped, we mean it stalled out. Yes, the the bus stalled out. And at this point... We didn't know what it was. So we said to the church, we were going to limit it to just the bridal party. But on the way to the reception, bring your plus one, the ring bearers, the flower girl, like everybody. Get all up in this party bus. Because the company graciously upgraded us for the price of... The bus that we originally wanted because they were out of the buses that we originally wanted for that weekend. Our bridal party was five. And five. It was 12 people total, yeah. but the party bus fit like 35 people or something like that. So we, we wanted a smaller bus, but they didn't have it. So they gave us the big bus. And limos are not an option when a lot of people in your bridal party are over six feet. Yeah, so. it's just more comfortable in a bus. Yeah. So Joe and myself get photos outside of Union Terminal. They look really cute. We're wearing our Mickey Mouse ears in some of them. Our photographers were pleasantly surprised with how well we dipped because they're like, do you think you guys could do a dip like you do this and this and like they're not even a third of the way of explaining how they want us to do a dip and i'm like like this (laughs) and they're like yes Just move this arm a little bit. Sweet. Perfect. Okay. We'll just do that all day then. Because thanks to German dancing, we knew how to do that very well. So then it's time to head to the reception, which is about half an hour from the church. 
Yes. And I'm going to name highways in Cincinnati. We have to take 75 to 74 to 275 to get there. We managed to get like halfway to 74 before the bus stops. We get it back up again. We get going and we stop like three times on 74 before finally really close to our parents' house. The bus just decides it does not want to go anymore. We're not really sure what's going on. Is it the battery? No, we're like on the side of the highway way like hey we have little kids we have yeah we have smallish children in the car i think in the they bus. were five uh they might have been closer to like four we were feeding them grapes though they were happy about that because we had stopped to take photos our friend was the one who had served mass he had to lock up the church and he was a bit behind everybody else and he noticed the a bus stopped on the side of the highway and he was like i'm gonna stop and see if these guys are doing okay it might look like the bus that my friends were in but no they should be at the reception by now oh hey it is you guys <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just remember him rocking into the bus. I guess it was open. Yeah, we or, had the door open because it was hot. Yeah, the, the AC, AC was didn't bu- work. The AC was busted. Because remember kids. that first bus, the AC didn't work, so he didn't take it. Yeah, the AC didn't work in this bus either after a while. So Rorick picks us up and we're just calling everyone in our phone book that we know is at the reception and has a big car. Because at this point, we have called our parents, but all of their phones are still on silent. So they have no idea that we're trying to call them. But we're able to get a hold of the guy running our reception at the Donnerschwaben. And we're like, hey, I'm going to need you to find our parents and tell them to take their phone off of do not disturb mode. (laughs) And just here is the approximate location. I remember how that conversation started. He's like, hey, Joey, how's everything? Is everything going okay? I'm like, no. (laughs) Everything is not going okay. (laughs) Hand the phone to my mom. (laughs) Mom, why isn't your phone on? Like, it's on on silent. What's wrong? What's wrong? We're on the side of the highway. So as we're we're probably, we're about halfway to the reception hall at this point. And as we are getting off of the highway, we see there's all of these people that we know driving to go get people. The guy driving our party bus, because we knew it wasn't his fault. It was the mechanics for not marking their vehicles properly. He said, I can have... Like, we can have people come out in, like, basically big vans to come pick everybody up. And I'm like, no, because by the time you guys get drivers and get out here, we can have friends and family come pick everybody up. Like, don't bother. Because the rental company was farther away than the reception hall. And it's not like they just had drivers sitting around waiting to do something where they could leave right away. Also, we were kind of not happy. We were very not happy at this point. Not with him. And like we told him multiple times, like, we know this is not your fault, but this super sucks. Everybody made it to the reception. It was a very small world. The bus ended up making it to the gas station parking lot where my dad's computer store used to be. And I'm pretty sure your cousin bought a 12 pack of something for them to drink in the parking lot. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that that's accurate i mean they needed to cool down can't blame them for that <laughs> i think he specifically purchased brown bags too i think he did too <laughs> we were not there for this no i don't think they took pictures <laughs> no and the photographers the did, photographers were already at the reception hall because they had driven separately yeah um so that that, that part was not documented i don't think no (laughs) probably but good for his sake at this point (laughs) we get to the reception hall and at this point our friend had already texted us what do you want to drink (laughs) and i was like waters a schwaben lager and a schwaben tea because those were our drinks of choice at the time so he comes out with drinks on a tray and we're like trying to calm ourselves down it's gonna be okay like we just need to chill um, a few people have who've like wandered outside just to like take in some fresh air like hey what y'all doing here like where is everybody else and we're like it's fine everything's fine <laughs> yeah we can stand here and take a picture for you 
So everybody made it to the reception hall and then we all walked in together. When all was said and done, we probably were only 20 minutes behind schedule. Yeah, like we weren't super behind schedule at this point. We were pretty up on it. But because our family and friends left right away, like when we were calling them, that was why. Yes, because our friends and family are amazing and we love them dearly. They, they just they just stopped what they were doing and they went in there to their van and drove to pick up people. We dance, we eat, we have some speeches. We have a live band. We have a live band who is awesome. We didn't do a DJ. Apparently they did a pretty good job stalling. Yeah. They just played some music and they were like, I don't know where they are, but let's play music. And people were dancing, having a good time. The hall had appetizers yeah the hall had appetizers out they do that all the time and unfortunately we didn't get to like take a picture of us all dressed up with the bride and groom balloons because one of the children had popped one of the balloons and i want to say the groom larry made the bride and groom so he used to own a balloon shop well he used to own like a gift shop and he also did it was like a greeting it was like greeting cards and stuff like that and like party supplies and he used to do like balloon bouquets and big like balloon arches and stuff on the side so he had that skill set so he made us a nice heart balloon arch he made us some balloon decorations it was very nice and apparently he made a little bride and groom too yeah and the kids liked to dance with them yeah that that was a big hit yeah like you said i don't think we got to we didn't get to see them in their full glory see him yeah we saw (laughs) pictures we did as a member of the donut schwaben shoe plotlers one thing that happens if you'd like it to is that the donut schwaben shoe plotlers will perform three dances at your wedding and you get to choose what those dances are so we said well of course because everyone on your side of the family pretty much had been involved with the shoe plotlers at some point and we had lots of friends in the shoe plotlers and everyone danced i feel like literally everyone danced so typically what happens at shoe plotler weddings it well, what can happen is people will do an open invitation and they'll just say any shoe plotlers that want to come to our wedding you're more than welcome to we did not have the ability to do an open shoe plotler invite for our wedding because if more shoe plotlers would have come to our wedding they would not have been able to dance so we moved the tables because we had to put the head table on the dance floor and we had moved it more to the side of the dance floor we took up the whole dance floor and it's the largest dance floor in hamilton county or at least was at one point lots and lots of dancers but before we danced we shot skied because eddie was there so that that's a tradition. I don't know if people know what a shot ski is. So I mean, it's it's, it's literally it's a ski with four shot glasses attached to it, and you all have to do a shot at the same time. And it always sucks for Joe because he's the tallest person, <laughs> so he has to bend down so he can be closer to everyone else's level to do the shot ski. <laughs> yeah, and I I prefer to do it after we danced, but just because I don't know if people know it's shoe plotlering, but it's a lot of spitting for you. Yes, and a lot of jumping up and down and hitting things for you. Yes. I prefer to do that. Not three shots deep. Yeah. So we had three dances that we did. And the last dance is called the bench dance because you do it with benches. We almost did not have a place to sit for the bench dance at our own wedding. Yeah. (laughs) We're like, "Uh, guys, where do we sit? And a couple got up and they're like, here, you guys sit here. (laughs) (laughs) Like, okay, (laughs) good. (laughs) Because it was like every man for himself with the benches. And we're like, wait, where do we go? Yeah. So the bench dance, there are props involved. Yes. So we have a table of beer in the middle and we have the benches on the outside and the guys, there's there's a story, I guess, if you follow along. So the guys are trying to, the guys are trying to impress the girls and woo the girls. And eventually they march off with the girls and the beer and the benches and oh, happy day. And beer's involved. And you get the drink while you dance. Yes. That's fun. We ended with the bench dance. And then we noticed your father is not dancing anymore. He's chilling at a table on the side of the dance floor with his leg propped up. My dad, with who is a retired shoe plotler. Very retired. Yes. Like had not danced with the shoe plotlers in forever. We had asked him to do one dance. 
He wanted to do all the dances. And attend two practices beforehand because it wasn't like he had the stuff in muscle memory. I think we pushed him to do that. I don't think I did not. I told me he didn't have to attend a practice or like attend a practice, but he had gotten injured. He said he had just twisted his ankle. This is when the lying began. <laughs> <laughs> So he had not really had anything to drink before we danced because he wanted to be with it when he danced. And he said he'd do all of his drinking afterwards. And boy, did he do his drinking afterwards. (laughs) It was his pain management. Apparently. (laughs) Apparently. His friends carried him to the bar and then would carry him back to his seat or would bring shots to him. And my dad is 6'4". Yes, he is. He's not a light guy. No. So poor Matt. He he earned. Matt earned every beer that he drank that night. He earned his best man stripes. Let's put it that way. Yeah. If you get stripes when you're a best man. I don't know. Apparently he had a deal with your parents to drive him back to our house because he was going to stay at our house while we were on our honeymoon. But that then meant that he had to help your mother get your father upstairs <laughs> Before he could go home. (laughs) Apparently it was a very eventful night. Yeah. So we are dancing. We're hanging out with friends and family. We're like, hey, you guys doing okay? And they're like, oh, yeah, we're fine. It's just a sprain. We just like to hang out here because we can see everything. Lies and deception. (laughs) Everything's fine. He'll see the doctor on Monday. I don't even think. Yeah, I don't think. I even gave it a second thought Yeah, because it was a big wedding. We invited 300. It was probably... It's like 200, 250, I think. uh, I think it was like between 250 and... I think it was like 250. I know I bumped us down a little bit. It was... There was a lot of people there. We get in our going away car, which is different than the party bus, which was the plan anyway. Have the same driver. He's really cool. Joe talks about Michael Jordan, like the whole drive to the hotel. I think we told him about the reception. Maybe. I don't know. I don't even know how Michael Jordan came up. Do you... Were we talking about Space Jam? You were probably talking about Space Jam. (laughs) I don't know why. I don't know why either. (laughs) We had a good time. We did have a good time. We go on our honeymoon. We come back home and we're like, hey, parents, come over for dinner. And they're like, "Uh, actually, maybe you come to dinner at our house. Like, I was like, I'll make you food. And they're like, no, no, just just come over to our house. (laughs) Okay. They were very insistent. They were very insistent. (laughs) And we get there and your father's leg is like super bandaged. And we're like, what the heck? What? No. So here's the crazier thing. At the time, you worked with your cousin and she was like, hey, have you seen your parents yet? And we're like, no, we're going to see him tonight because you like had to go. You went to work on like Tuesday or Wednesday. And like we went, we saw them for dinner that night. Oh, yeah. We get there and we're like, uh, what? Oh, yeah. Your father tore his Achilles tendon at your wedding. He's going to be off work for the next six to eight weeks and got surgery while you guys were gone. (laughs) No one told you because they were under explicit orders to not tell you. Oh, they did a good job with that. They did. That was the one secret that your family was good at keeping. I also don't think we were like checking in on them ever. We were like, Napa Valley, San Francisco, what is family? It doesn't matter. There's also like a three hour time difference. Yeah, but I didn't even see it on Facebook or anything. Nope. They were super locked down with that They did a good job keeping that a secret, but it was very surprising to walk in expecting to be all happy and, and discuss stuff that we saw. And you walk in and you see your dad in a bandage because he had surgery. And yeah, that was crazy. Yep. And a a knee replacement, another Achilles tendon or yeah, another Achilles tendon fix for his other leg and a meniscus tear later. He's doing well. That was the start of a slew of surgeries on his two knees. Yep. But overall, we had a really good wedding. It was nice. 
Stephen and Hillary missed out on the German dancing because we weren't super good friends then. So they're like, yeah, we're just going to peace out now. And we couldn't be like, oh, but because we didn't Don't know they were Don't forget Tony out. didn't even come. Oh, yeah. Tony didn't even come. He got sick or something, allegedly. <laughs> Maybe we just won't show up to Tony's wedding at the last minute. <laughs> just kidding, Tony. And we'll be like. We love you. We're good. Yeah, we're a lot better friends with them now than we were back then. I mean, the bus was a hiccup for sure. But like I said, it was only it only set us back 20 minutes. The millennial generation has a lot of once in a lifetime, like history moments that have happened during their lifetime. We have lots of, ah, this will be a great story to tell your kids. (laughs) moments about our wedding like literally that's what everybody said about the bus breaking down oh it'll just be a great story to tell your kids one day don't (laughs) sweat it that doesn't always help people feel better no we were upset because the kids were in the bus because we invited more people to come on the bus yeah i felt like crap because i'd like yes bring all of your friends bring everyone on the party bus and then oh no we're all stuck on the side of the highway But they did give us money back. They did because our matron of honor and our best man went to the rental company that Monday and got us a check for half of the money. They are amazing people and we love them dearly and are so glad that they are in our lives still to this day. Not the rental company. (laughs) Not the rental company. (laughs) To clarify. (laughs) I will not name drop them, but I do not necessarily recommend them. That was kind of part of the deal, right? Don't write a bad review. Yep. Part of the deal was do not write a review about this. Some people said that we should have asked for more money. And I was like, they did provide half of a service. They did more than half of the service. It just wasn't fantastic. So I don't think we talked about what the issue was because we thought it was a battery maybe because it was really hot. I figured it was more of like an alternator because the battery is more when you're trying to start your car than when you're trying to run your car. No, it turns out there was zero coolant in the bus because the reason why we were supposed to take the white bus and not the black bus was because they were flushing out the coolant lines on the black bus and had not put any coolant in it yet. Hmm. So it was technically not good to drive, but like there, it wasn't clearly marked or the keys were still easily accessible enough to the... Communication was not Communication was subpar. Yes. And I don't think it was the bus driver's. It was definitely not the bus driver's fault. He was trying to provide us with a good experience. He was a great guy. I want to say his name was Dave. Sure. (laughs) (laughs) Or Jeff. No, I'm pretty sure it was Dave. So, yeah, it was nice. The flowers were pretty. The food was yummy. All of our friends and family were great. As far as expenses go, we came out with a steal because the donor shaman is... At least it was. It was yeah. before the remodel. I don't know how much it cost to have a wedding there now. Well, it was extremely good food. Really big haul. <laughs> yeah. Low cost. Like, I think some of the rental halls we were looking at were averaging $35 a pe- person. They, it was closer to like 25 to $30 a head. We did half-heartedly look at other reception halls just to see what else was out there. That's what I mean, other reception halls. And usually the price was like 25 to $30 a head for the meals that we would want, as opposed to the about $20 a head for the meal that we wanted at the Donaschwaben. But the other big difference was that we were like right on the cusp of being between hall sizes. You're saying you're going to be like 250 to 300 people. This half of the hall can hold 250 people but it's going to be tight so really you're going to want to open up the wall and then it's going to increase your price because you're renting out more space now the donut Schwaben, we were always going to have enough space for the number of people that we needed so that was another reason why we stuck with them and the food is delicious it is <laughs> So now it's time for your favorite segment. So favorite. Very segment. Much love. It is time for Joe's dad joke of the week. Yay. So, Caroline, are you ready for this? I guess so. The police just showed up and took the dogs. What? Why? Unpaid barking tickets. (sighs) I married you. (laughs) (laughs) As evidenced in this podcast episode. (laughs) Yep. Unless that was all a dream. No. Okay. 
Oh, that does it for this week's show. Thanks so much for listening. We want to hear from you. If you have ideas for a show topic, if you have comments about a previous show, maybe you liked it or maybe you learned something new or perhaps you have constructive criticism. We want to make this show better for you. There are many ways to get in touch with us. You can send us an email at craftparentingpodcast at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at craftparentingpodcast to get updates on when episodes have dropped, see pictures of our adorable kids and more. If you like what you hear, please leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or your podcatcher of choice. Make sure to share the show with your friends, family, your neighbor down the street. It really helps our show grow. You can also send us stuff to our awesome P.O. Box. And all this information is available on our beautiful website, including the address of that P.O. Box. And that website is www.craftparentingpodcast.com. You should go check it out. We will post the show notes up there. Plus, we'll be writing blog posts about some of the stuff that doesn't make it in the podcast. If you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to the show. We are listed on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and just about every podcast app out there. And with that, I'm Joe. And I'm Caroline. See you next time on the Craft Parenting Podcast. talk about our happily ever after wedding this is <laughs> this is the craft parenting podcast <laughs> just start talking i'll get myself back together <laughs> Shot, 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 shots. Except we're parents. And cut. And we're back. We haven't even started yet.